Good evening, everyone. Uh, that okay? <laughs> that was a thing. Was, way to start the stream was, yeah. off. Um, hi, everyone. We're here with another Disney review. Of course, we're talking about Robin Hood today, the 1973 film. This is one that I've been absolutely dying to get to for the last few weeks. Um, I've talked about this a number of times in this. Well, f for anyone who's new here or doesn't know what we're doing, um, you could probably tell from all the previous videos. We're doing a huge retrospective, 100 Years of Wonder, on all of the Disney oh, animated wait. classics. I think there's like 60 or so of them. And obviously, we're up to number 21 today. Um, every so often as we're doing these, I'm looking ahead to the next few weeks as to what the next big one is, the next one that I'm really looking forward to. Um, but on the concept of like looking forward to something, that might actually influence your review on this one today. Because you kind of alluded to something before we went live and how expectations of a film and watching it again. So it's going to be an interesting discussion. This is one that I've really wanted to talk about. And uh, yeah, I usually hold the DVD up. There we go. Robin Hood number 21. I apologize in advance for the state of my voice. Um, I am currently getting over a cold. Uh, just as soon as I get some time off work, boom, there I am, illness again. I feel like I get ill now every couple of weeks, like every two or three weeks, I'm ill again. So uh, I'm going to try and power on through. I never really get ill, it's great. I'd, I used to be that person as well. I never used to get ill, and then... Uh, and yeah. then you turn 30. <laughs> so you, you ain't wrong, and my body just uh, gave up <laughs> on life, slowly but surely. Not even slowly, it was just it was just a light switch one day. Of a night. And here we are. It's just a, it's just a downhill race to the bottom now, isn't it? I think. Anyway, on a much cheery note, let's talk some Robin Hood. So I'm gonna pass over to you again. You've watched this twice, I think, haven't you? You've watched this twice in preparation for tonight. Yeah. Um. um it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I, I I did enjoy it. It it was good. It was a good movie, but it hit every expectation I had of it. So I went in knowing it'd be good. But it hit the expectations. I think we we spoke about it briefly before. Like the great thing about movies, like uh, for instance, Lady of the Tramp, as you know, probably top for me. Like at the moment, so far we've done, it's one of the top ones at the moment. Also because I went in kind of not thinking it'd be terrible, but I went in thinking, I wonder what I'm thinking. I haven't seen it in a long time. Whereas this, I went in thinking, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great, and I came out going, it was, it was exactly how I thought it would be. Um, so I did enjoy it, but it hit. All the expectations of it being really good, like you said, you did go in thinking, oh, you went in for, you know, yes, this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, when was when was the last time that you watched this film before today? About, I'd say a year ago. Um, yeah, about about a year ago, just over a year and a half ago or something. I did watch it then. Um, so and still I remember pretty fresh thinking, then, rel relatively compared yeah, to Yeah, I mean, I remember time. watching it that time about a year and a half ago. And the thing is, before that, I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. And I remember watching it not with a bit of expectations. And I thought, oh, this is amazing. This is great. And then this time I watched it, I thought, oh, it's going to be great. And I went, yeah, it is. And yeah. that, that's the thing. I think if I hadn't watched it that year and a half ago, my opinion would be not different because, like I say, it hit the expectations, but it would be more ecstatic of, yes, this is amazing because it's got so many things in it. It's got a, what's that word for the thing? Um, the jolly, uh, you know, when something's like, it's like lighthearted, but it's got serious things that happen, but in a very lighthearted way, that family fun, you know, a lot of you know goofy characters. I mean, they're all animals. You know, you've got everything's goofy, everything's um, lighthearted, but it's off a serious topic. Yeah. It's got everything you need, really. Yeah. And I mean, the film, um, too little, well, hopefully we'll be, have a lot more interesting information to go into in the review. But one thing to note is, We've mentioned this a couple of times, but it's the first official Disney animated classic to have no involvement from Walt Disney at all, because obviously this was um, made post, um, well, after after he died. Uh, Aristocats, he died before it was finished, but he was still involved in the production of it in some way and con consultations and things like that. This was the first one that was just completely without him. And also it is the first Disney animated feature to feature just an entire animal cast with no human characters as well. Um, which I don't even know if it's like a main thing of Disney films. But yeah, as you, as you get through them, you're like, oh yeah, that has got all animals in it. You know, you look at Lion King, you look at uh, Zootopia and things like that. And you just kind of take it for granted. And then you go, oh yeah, this this actually was the first one. Yeah, but the thing about Lion King and Zootopia is... The idea is Lion King, about lions, it's about animals, you know, Zootopia, it's about animals, and like, this is not, that's the thing, so it's, it's a bit different in that respect. Yeah, yeah, no, totally, sorry, we've just had a comment come through from a JX editor, 
who says, you sound hoarse. You okay? Um, yeah, as I explained, I'm, I'm getting over an illness. So uh, there we go. A question. I have a question. Why do we call it sounding hoarse? Do horses never sound okay? Is that a thing? <laughs> like, spelt do we spelt not... slightly differently. There's an A thrown in there. so Yeah, but still, I mean, like, you know, if you're looking after your horse, you should be sounding normal. Like, I do generally think the stereotype comes from people looking after their horses really badly. So if anyone out there has a horse, you need to take care of it, essentially. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about first time watching this film. I mean, you said that you last watched this film about a year ago, but um, do you have any sort of like fond childhood memories of this film? Was it one that you watched quite Thing a lot is, when you were younger? I did watch it quite a lot. I think I watched it like, you know, a couple of times, but because I watched it when I was very young, it blended. Remember when we spoke about Bedknobs and Broomsticks and yeah. the main character being pretty much that it all it blended. I remember thinking, so which one's this guy from? And you know, as I got older, I saw um, you know, and I was like, same movie, yeah. Like in my head, it was the same thing. And then because of the cartoon aspect and the live action aspect, it blended with Mary Poppins. And to me, it was all the same fucking thing. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's that's yeah. like my memories of it are very very confusing. Um, but it, it was one of them, like I say, I'd seen it when I was younger and, you know, it was, it, it was like I said, it was one of those background ones that you remember bit by bit. And then it was when I watched it a year and a half ago and I really went, oh, this is really good. I don't remember it being this good kind of thing. And then this time it was, I remember it being this good. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, this was one of the big ones that I would watch all of the time. I absolutely love this film. I still distinctly remember the video cassette, uh, which unfortunately, oh, hang on. Oh, as luck would have it, I was going to say I couldn't find it, and I just glanced down, and there it is. As oh my god, as it was meant by the universe, it's right there at my feet. There we go. That's my original one. Love the front cover to that. Still intact, vaguely. Oh my god, do you remember these? It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, there you go. And then they'd advertise all of their other shit in there as well in the case. Yeah. Remember oh, when cases were interesting so like that? Oh, now we open the case. Do you and remember this black. logo as well? Yes. Like, oh, yeah. Love it, love it. Oh, that's that's. And didn't they have Disney Fast Play as well? You are sorry. Disney Fast Play when it became like uh, yes. DVD. Yes. Yeah, that, that's yeah. on the DVD. Yeah. 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 Um, so I would watch this a lot. This was one of the big ones for me. And even when I was younger, I meant we'll get onto the reuse of animation in this as well, which is kind of a thing that the director, Wolfgang Reitherman, likes to do quite a lot in his tenure of Disney films, is to reuse animation. And we've seen that already before. We've seen that in Sword in the Stone, which we made mention of. There's a bunch in Jungle Book as well. Um, and even not just limited to his Disney films as well. There's um, a great um, compilation on YouTube showing all the reused animation which I actually sent you before we went live which is a pretty interesting watch but this one felt like it's got the most of it in and even as a kid there were moments like the um the phony king of england song where you've got clucky dancing with little john and you know there's close-ups on little john's face and i was like oh that's basically blue dancing with king louis from Jungle yeah Rock. and also you, it's funny you say clucky because that rhymes with uh ducky which is another reference i always make <laughs> But we're not going to go into that one. No, no. For the sake of my childhood, we can't. We can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, it still comes up, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I adore this film. Um, just the legend of Robin Hood in general, um, you know, and, and then as I was growing up, I, I eventually watched stuff like uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves and other different iterations of the legend as well. But to me, honestly... This one holds up there as one of the best. It might not be the most faithful. Um, you know, there's no like Merry Men in it, for example, which is a thing that the um, the animation director wanted to introduce was the Merry Men, and th that was overruled by the director, who favoured a more buddy. I was gonna say like a buddy cop film, but it's 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 not a cop film at all, but like a buddy road movie type thing, and just wanted to whittle it down to. Robin Hood and Little John, which I actually think works really well for the film. And it wasn't until today where I read that and they said, oh, the Merry Men aren't in there. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, you're right. That is like a massive thing with the Robin Hood character that you always see Robin Hood and his band of Merry Men. And they're not in this film, which seems like a huge aspect to leave out of it. But yeah, I think the film works. I, I, I just instantly fell in love with all the characters from this one. The I, I always love the villains. I always talk about that in the reviews. The villains are just I, either if they're funny or 
or scary or they just have like way more personality to them than the heroes do um and it was the same when i was a kid i loved prince john and as i've got older the the buffoonery of prince john and his sidekick sir hiss um i absolutely love all that stuff peter euston off the voice we'll go into like characters later on and voice actors but he is without a doubt one of my favorites in this film um and I can only imagine what the recording sessions would have been like. It, it just seems like everyone was having a lot of fun with these characters. And it shows, like, when this came out, it, it did release some mixed reviews. It made its money back. It grossed about $33 million worldwide. Um, and it was only done on a budget of $5 million. Um, But reviews were pretty mixed. I think a lot of criticism was leveled to the reuse of animation. Um, but over time, this has become a bit of a cult classic. And I know a lot of people sort of at, in our age group at least um that really love this one and hold this up as one of the best this was one i remember as well um being on tv quite a lot it's not very often that'll put a, a disney animated classic on tv but i distinctly remember like a, like a sunday early afternoon kind of movie or sunday late morning movie like this one would be on sometimes and i'd catch a little bit so yeah that's kind of where i'm coming at this film um and as i've got older it, it just it's just still great still great i'm always waiting for that drop off where things aren't quite as good you know when you watch them as a kid and you think they're the best thing ever and you watch them again as an adult and you're like oh this is kind of shit and not as good as i remember it now thankfully that isn't the case for me i, I still i had a blast watching this again and it's not like it was a new one similar to you i i, I watch it I, I don't think i've it's probably been more than a year since I've watched it, but um, it's one that I've watched regularly enough where I just kind of know it. So it's similar to you, there weren't really any surprises waiting for me in this one. But I guess it yeah, is just it... kind of interesting that we are watching all of these in sequence so we can look at sort of where the studio is built from. Where it kind of goes. Film, I guess. It's like yeah. a chart of when you go, when you go through your ex-girlfriend, you're like, oh, that's when I had a mental breakdown. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It's a bit of a roller coaster ride, isn't yeah, it? Basically, it's the same sort of thing. I think there's more good than bad in Disney. Uh, yeah, I just, I just hope that one day Disney can, uh, can go back and we can I just look at this we've modern period as a time where it's there's really always bad. periods though. There's don't we? Don't, it's not usual that they have like one and then it goes back. It usually has a few, and it's the same with has a few good ones. It usually is like time. Um, what's the word? Um, yeah, time. It's it. You know, it's usually periods that it has rather than like one or two. Yeah, I think the the low period that we've had at the moment is isn't even a fault of Walt Disney. Really, it was just the fact that there yeah, was a fault. world war happening at the time, and the the government came in and was like, right, you need to make propaganda stuff, and they shut their money down, and they were in a really bad state. I often wonder though what the what disney would look like as a company not even now but back then if world war ii hadn't have happened and they'd have kept trucking out movies at the same rate they were doing there'd be a couple off, out earlier wouldn't there? pinocchio and fantasia would have made a lot more money than they did um because the european markets would have opened so they would have probably been massive successes um i don't think they would have had to have gone for a simpler style for dumbo Maybe, because that was right on the verge of it, wasn't it, I think, Dumbo um, and Bambi and everything. It's just interesting to know where they would have gone, what they would have done. Uh, but yes, I think a uh, lot more would have been out sooner. A lot would have been pushed forward. Um, I think, you know, that would have been a big, big thing. I wonder if we would have any different ones, though. We probably would have had a few different ones, I think, like a few more added but i think a lot would be pushed forward so that you get the likes of um alice in wonderland and stuff would just be released a lot earlier yeah alice um, in wonderland peter pan would have definitely been a lot yeah. sooner cinderella as well um yeah I, I wonder if they would have gone with some different project ideas maybe i don't know i mean it's it's, like uh, it's a queen. hypothetical situation but I've, I've i just became curious of that sort of looking at when we're talking about the could the have gone for the ice queen couldn't the they oh sorry it could have gone for the ice queen yeah, they they, they kind of did. Well, they could but... have done it back in the time when the world was good. Yes, and now now everything sucks. Anyway, um, so usually how it goes with a lot of these Disney films is that I say, oh, Disney had an idea for this back in the 30s. And that's kind of the, the same thing with this one, too. 
So it says during the production of Snow White, I, I'm guessing Disney and it, and you know and his partners must have just like acquired a bunch of stuff and just said like what can we make movies out of? Just throwing ideas out there. I'm guessing where that's came, uh, where this came from. Um, an idea that he was really interested in adapting is um, a 12th century legend called Reynard the Fox. Uh, I don't actually know anything about this. I did a quick little bit of a read of it. It's like this medieval. Uh, series of tales sort of like english french german dutch fables that all have this anthropomorphic fox as a character and he's kind of a bit of a roguish character he's not really a heroic character i don't think in that respect uh, and he was really enamored by the story and apparently disney was quoted uh, february the 12th 1938 saying i see swell possibilities in reynard but is it is it smart to make it we have such a terrific kid audience, parents and kids together. That's the trouble. Too sophisticated. We'll take a nose dive doing it with animals, um, which you know later on it's it's a big success with animals. So I don't think animals was the problem. Um, also, Reynard the Fox. There were going to be a couple of animated sections in the live action Treasure Island film, which came out in 1950, but then they scrapped that and it became the first Disney live action, purely live action film that they made. And then, do you remember when they were going to make Sword in the Stone, I mentioned, there was a, a film called Chanticleer, which was going to be about a rooster as the main character. Um, Reynard the Fox was going to be the villain in that film, or, or a fox character was going to be the villain called Reynard, at least. Um, all of these got shelved, and then eventually they decided that Robin Hood would be the next film after Aristocats. A really absolutely baffling idea that was thrown around at one point from the animation director, um, Ken Anderson, was that he wanted to set the film, Robin Hood, he wanted to set it in the Deep South uh, because he wanted to recapture the spirit of Song of the South, which was made in 1946. Um, we don't want to said that, that everyone had All the animators had a great time working on that film. And uh, Yeah, but do you know what happened with that movie? I do. I've, I've actually never seen that film, we, though. I will say that. We don't want to capture that kind of spirit. That is a very mean spirit. We don't want to do that. I, I know. I know. And this is what the executive said, surprisingly. Um, they said, yeah, because of that film's reputation, there is absolutely no way in hell you're setting it in the Deep South. And quite fucking rightly so as well. It's an English legend. It's set in Nottingham. Set it in England. <laughs> like, what? I absolutely just cannot believe that thought process of setting it in the Deep South. It's just absolutely just so strange to me. Do you ever find it weird as well? Like, you've got all these, like, English folk tales, like Robin Hood, all that kind of stuff. Imagine you get, like, let's say Lord of the Rings, right? Let's say you get a Southern Americanized, like, you know what I mean? You yeah, could you? Like, like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, do you know what I mean? Hey, yo, I got the ring for it. That just wouldn't work. It just really would. I'm like, trying to think of some quotes from the film now, like, what? Like, could you imagine, like, Gollum from the Deep South or something? <laughs> hey, yeah. that's my precious. Give me back. My, my, my precious. <laughs> <laughs> it just wouldn't work. <laughs> be great, though. It'd be amazing. It'd be amazing. We'd watch it. <laughs> Y'all yeah, shall not pass. Y'all not from around <laughs> these parts, are you, boy? And someone brings out a banjo. Um... <laughs> Let's see what else is there to talk about. Oh, yes, yeah, so there was a bit of dissension in the ranks as well with some of the animators because um, they were coming up with like animal concepts of which characters should be which animals and things like that. And originally, the Sheriff of Nottingham was going to be a goat because they wanted to kind of break stereotypes of, oh, I don't know, like, like a tiger is going to be angry and scary and blah, you know, and things like that. And then it was overruled by the director and they said, no, we're going to make him a wolf. And they were like, oh, well, wolves are like, ang you know, kind of aggressive and scary looking. So that's just so some of them weren't happy about the change. Personally, I'm happy with that change. I don't think I would have maybe, you know, in a different world, if he was a goat and he was always a goat. And that was the film that I watched. It was the same voice coming out of the character. Then I would have probably just lived with it and he would have been fine. But just now i i think that correct decision was made there changing the animals so like the big scary animals like elephants and rhinos and crocodiles are working for the the king the king of course is a lion which you know richard the lion heart that makes sense and the lion is king of the jung uh, jungle uh you know king yeah. of the... yeah yeah uh and i just think it works i think it works i and um, just go into some of the characters as well little john being um a bear 
<coughs> I actually, it, it's I haven't seen earlier adaptations of Robin Hood actually, but Little John's always been the complete opposite to his namesake, right? He's always been this big, kind of chunky guy, either strong or fat or fat strong kind of character. And I don't know if that was popularized by the legends themselves, by this film or even earlier adaptations of the film, but him being a bear just makes sense. And I think by having the same voice actor as well, Phil Harris, great voice actor, he's always gonna be Baloo to me, but I think because this is also a bear character, he's very similar, so, I, I was sort of like instantly taken in by the little John character in this film, and I just think the voice works. I mentioned last week that Phil Harris is Thomas O'Malley. I'm hearing his voice again, but I'm thinking about Baloo. Like, it's he's just Baloo to me, because that was probably the first one that I watched with his voice in there. So it's more of a easy transition, I guess, for me to get on board with little John's character, because he's also a bear character voiced by the same guy. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> I think, you know, what was the word? He, 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 the thing I said about the animals of the four. So, uh, little uh, Friar Tuck, that's it, was meant to be um, a pig, wasn't he? Yeah, I did actually know that. You mentioned that. Yeah, to me so we Fry, went yeah that's the thing. Friar Tuck was meant to be a pig. Um, but if you go back to 1958, um, there's Looney Tunes cartoon and Porky Pig plays Friar Tuck, and you've got Daffy Duck as um, Robin Hood. So, I mean, I don't know if this is the reason, but I wonder whether they looked at that and went, it's a bit too similar. So we'll change him. Which oh, wouldn't surprise me because obviously it's their rival and they probably would go a bit weird. Do you know what I mean? But, um, you know, it is interesting to see that because I, I genuinely think that would be the reason um, because how similar would that look? Yeah, no, it, you, you probably got a good point there as well, especially because you say it came out in 58. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how popular that particular Looney Tunes cartoon was, so I'm not sure, but probably just to keep on the safe side, yeah, change. Yeah, it would have, it would have still, yeah, because it's still Looney Tunes. It was still, it was still, it was Daffy Duck. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like it was an unknown character. So we have got Carl in the comments. Says evening, gents. How you doing, man? Hope everything's going well. Hey, it's Carl with the key. Um, I think it was SeaWorld Man as well made a, a comment on one of my other videos saying, uh, it was probably on the last Disney one we did actually, saying, try and do two videos a week, Chris. And I was like, I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to find some free time. But luckily, for the next two weeks, I should have a little bit more free time. Just a tad little bit more free time. We should do two a day. You what? We should do two a day. Two a day? 14 a week. No, they can't do it. People get bored of me anyway, 14 times a week. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm in, gonna take myself to the cinema this upcoming Friday because I got the day off. It's it's Good Friday and I'm not in work, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go and see Doom Two because I still haven't seen that yet. I don't know if there's anything else out that's massive. Like I, I wanted to see Kung Fu Panda Four, but um, I've heard that's really 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 bad, and I want to try and maintain the integrity of that trilogy. I've not in my mind. seen a single Kung Kung Fu Panda movie. <clears throat> Watch the first three. Apparently, four is just a cash grab. Feels really like low scale, like a TV show, and similar to Toy Story, is a completely unnecessary fourth instalment just made for money when they had a perfect trilogy on their hands before. So Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the list goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Um, so that's kind of the the preamble. I, we talked about the reuse of animation, and it it just makes sense to go and check it out. Um, I I did wonder the reason why there was so much within this film. Um, and apparently, this is according to Wikipedia, so who knows if this is true, but it says the sheer amount of time that the studio was developing the several settings in the film and auditioning the uh, actor to voice Robin Hood, uh, which apparently was like a really last minute thing, like they were really struggling to get a voice. Uh, production fell behind schedule and because of this they had to cut some corners and they had to reuse animation but there's a lot there's um, the most notable ones that they've they've dipped back into Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs I think that's in some of the dancing animation from Maid Marian and it's mostly all during the the phony King of England scene that's where the the huge collection of it's from uh, the Jungle Book there's countless bits from that um, Aristocats um Carl. there's stuff from um as i said yeah Carl. jungle book already said that um Carl. i think there's some like alice in wonderland stuff in there as well maybe there's like a whole bunch car is in it <coughs> yeah car <laughs> he's not even slightly he is car oh carl says that the new ghostbusters isn't bad i totally forgot that that film was even out yeah ghostbusters frozen empire or something i can't say i'm in any 
dire need to go and see that. Me film. neither. Um, I love Ghostbusters one. Ghostbusters two, I enjoyed as a kid as well, but after I've watched it again as an adult, it's I, I still enjoy you know, it, but it's nowhere near as good as the first one. Do you know who I don't love? Who? Adam. What's his name? Um, Driver. Adam Driver. Is that his name? Kylo Ren. Yeah. Okay, but what, what does what does he have to do with um with Ghostbusters? <laughs> Where is he in Ghost? Isn't he in Ghostbusters? No. Did I imagine this? Yes. Did I dream did. this? Oh, don't know why I dreamed it because I didn't like it. <laughs> Damn, throw throw some shade to Adam Driver right there. He's Randomly. not even in the fucking movie, man. <laughs> Where down he is? What movie no. is he in? That isn't... No, he's he's really not. <laughs> he really is. Hang on. Keep going, but I'll find it. Dude, he's he's not like. Don't do this to me. This is one of my pet peeves. He is not in fucking Ghostbusters. You don't need to Google this. I will slap your face off of your face. He's not in Ghostbusters. Yeah, but he is. Dude, he's not. Don't don't test me, man. I know my shit on this. I know my Ghostbusters. He ain't in it. Dude, he never even, like, his first sort of, like, major role was Force Awakens, I think. I know, but that that was years ago. Oh, no, you're right. He's not. Okay. That right there, for anyone watching at home, anyone wants to know one of like my biggest pet peeves in life, it's when <laughs> that that whole scenario that just played out, that's one of them. When I 100% I know my shit was? on something, and someone's like, no, 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 I think I'm right. And I'm like, no, dude, you're wrong. Trust me on this. What? It's like, Why no, no, no. So I'm going to take 10 minutes to Google something that I already know I'm fucking right on. Ah, yeah, but why did I, why did I think he was? There's got to be a reason. I, I don't, don't like know. There isn't even anyone that remotely looks like him. It's got to be. I don't know, but yeah, continue. Anyway, we return to our regularly scheduled programming of Robin Hood. Uh, let's talk characters. I think yeah, we've we've kind of talked about all the. Uh, behind the scenes stuff and everything there's one other little bit as well there was one behind the scenes video on the dvd copy that i've got which i want to talk about which might be interesting but uh, characters who is your favorite character in this film if you can't pick one pick two got pick one pick two hold on hang on uh do you know what i don't want to don't want to say robin hood because that sounds cliche but do you know why it's robin hood why because I went dressed as Robin Hood to my brother's wedding. That's cool. One one time, many, many years ago. So I have to pick Robin Hood. And he's just, I really love the design as well. Like the, des- the thing is, I was going to say the design of the fox. I mean, you can't go wrong. You just design a fox. But I think they did it, like, they did it really, really well. Um, you know, I think his personality, I think the way like sort of, you know, when he dresses up and I, I just think the whole concept of him. And yeah, like I say, I went dressed as Robin Hood once. So that's that's why I've got to pick him. Yeah, I think I think the fox character really works for him. Um, I mean, I, I could you imagine know... him? God, sorry. Could you imagine him being another animal? <sighs> yeah, it's it's really difficult, isn't it? Because I've just like so... if you were to think another animal, what would he be? What what if there was another one? Long like would be second. What would you say like would be him? Oh, God, maybe like um... oh no, because the, the the sizing wouldn't work. I was going to say like. Like a weasel or like a stoat or something. Yeah, like I think you still. You, st- you what, sorry? <laughs> I said a sloth. A, sl- a sloth. <laughs> um, yeah, I just can't imagine him as any other character. And I, I think, um, I mean, I didn't know about that whole Reynard the Fox thing, so that wouldn't have, like, filtered into my mind at all. But uh, I think just, like, the colour scheme as well, like, the orange of the fox fur offset with the green of the outfit just works really well for the character. Like, it's a cool colour yeah. scheme, I think. I think I think as well, the thing that... It's, it's the contrast between him and Maid Marion, obviously both foxes. Um, I think that, that's what I like as well, the whole, the whole imagery of it. Um, like I say, I know it sounds cliche, and I hate being that cliche, but I think the whole imagery of that main character works really, really well. And he's... We're, he's the first Robin Hood I ever saw, so it's, yeah, same, same. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, like when I was a kid, before I knew who Robin Hood was, I thought it was a fox. 
like you know, it's like, oh, he stole from the rich, gave to the poor. I was like, a fox did that. Yeah. Like that was as a kid. I went, that was a fox. That's so cool. And then you realise he's not. You're a bit disappointed. And when I dressed up as Robin Hood, I realised I'm not dressing up as a fox. I'm just dressing up as some random dude. But I think it's really, really cool. And also when they do the whole archery and like the king, I think that's just so cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that scene as well. Uh, the the amount of disguises they go through in this film as well, when when they yes. dress as the uh, the gypsy, the fortune tellers, the gypsy women at the beginning. Uh, can you even still say gypsies? Is it like traveling folk now? Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna say gypsies. We're on my channel, <laughs> so there we go. I'm gonna offend someone else now, apparently. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, what was what does little John? Oh, he's he's got. Is it Sir Reginald, the Duke of Chutney? Or something, and he's in like this, right, really over <laughs> yes. the top purple outfit. Um, and then you've got Robin Hood dressed as the stork. I think the fox character works as well because often with foxes you associate like slyness and like craftiness and things like that. But he's a hero of the people. But when you're in the action scenes and he's kind of sneaking around, you still kind of get that element of like the animal coming through. I'm probably like reading way too much into this, but I, yeah, I think it was like, a really inspired you know choice what? picking that. You know the you know that scene in Shrek with uh, P- Pinocchio and he's doing the whole Mission Impossible thing. Yeah, that could easily be Robin Hood. Yes, yeah, it could. Yeah, this is a bit of a tangent as well because it's a totally different animal, but it's the same kind of vibe for me. Uh, if any, we've got actually got seven people watching. This is great. So if any of you have played this video game at home, let me know. Um, Sly Cooper uh, or Sly Raccoon, um, great series of video games on the PS2. Um, I think the fourth one came out on PS3. There's some of my favorite video games of all time. Um, they're, they're mostly, there's some elements of platforming involved. It's from the same studio that made the infamous games. Is it, was it Sucker, Sucker Punch game? I don't know, can't remember. But that same kind of character, Sly Cooper. Uh, I'm going to see if I can bring up a picture, actually. Um, By the way, off tangent, do you know why I think I thought Adam Driver was in uh, Ghostbusters? why because i saw a poster so finn wolfhard is in it right yeah. and I, I know i knew that i knew i knew the name finn was in it and i saw a picture and i saw paul Rudd, and out the corner of my eye i saw like a glimpse of what looked like adam driver just from let's say just from the corner of my eye and i made two and two together in my head and went finn star wars kylo ren adam driver's in it <laughs> like that's what my brain did which is makes sense but really a weird kind of connection <laughs> I just realised you. If I bring up a picture here, you won't be able to see it, right? No. Okay. Well, for the viewers at home who might not know who Sly Raccoon is or Sly Cooper, if you Google I that, know. right? Oh no, you're on your phone. You can't do it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna bring I it can. up on the stream. I've anyway. got two things on me. I've got two things with me. I'm gonna bring it up on the stream. Why is this not? I, I know who Sly Cooper is. Yeah, I might have to abandon this whole thing because uh, I know who Sly Cooper is. And I've I got know it in front who of you. Me. I know you do, but people at home might not. Anyway, fuck it, I can't do it. But anyway, Google that shit. It's a great video game. If you haven't played it, go and play it. Um, yeah, similar kind of vibes between those two characters. Um, my favorite character, I mean, I've already said, is is Prince John. I think Peter Ustinov is an inspired choice. I love how um, wacky he is, how infantile he is as well. Um, it, it's just, yeah, the, some of the line deliveries are amazing. Just his laugh as well when he's like, ah ah and he's like so obnoxiously over-the-top posh. Um, oh, what was, I, I mentioned this scene to you earlier. It's where all the rhinos and the elephants and the, the king's guard are trying to catch Clucky, the, the, the chicken, know, and he just goes, seize the, the rhinos fat remind like, me. Yeah. The rhinos awesome. remind me of Maleficent's goons. Oh yeah, like the the kind of like the way they're and... born. I don't know if you see it as well, but I was watching it thinking they really remind me of them. I never specifically thought of that, but now you've mentioned that, I can kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah, I maybe the way they that. move, the way they're drawn, but they're very yeah. Just looking ahead as well at other comparisons to stuff, um, we've got Robin Hood and Maid Marian in this, uh, a fox and a vixen, and we'll, we'll get that in a few films later down the line as well with Todd and Vixie in Fox and the Hound, um, similar kind of character. Also, speaking of Robin Hood, because that's what we're doing, this, this whole thing's about, um, I also, uh, when I was 10 years old, I was in a play and I played Robin Hood. So oh, no way. I have a lot of connections <laughs> to Robin Hood that I'm just remembering in my head. 
and I won a like a head teachers award for it. I remember that. I have a little certificate somewhere in my Robin Hood has been house. all the way throughout your life. This is great. I know. Oh, and I won an award for dressing as Robin Hood when I was six years old. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like my thing. Robin has got to be my favorite character. I'm just remembering these. It is such a cool look, though, as well, isn't it? Like just just the hat with the feather is so indicative. It like the green's quite striking as well. Um, bow and arrows are just fucking cool. Like I I was always a sword kind of kid. Like it, yeah. everyone would do this. Like anyone who's watching, you'd go out on a walk or something. If you live in the countryside, wherever, and you'd find a stick on the floor, and it'd be a good stick. And if JX is still watching, he knows exactly what I'm talking about because we talk about this stuff all the time. You pick it up and you're like Aragorn, you're like, this is a good sword. And you'd walk with that shit. And you'd fight with yeah. that shit. And you'd attack trees with that See, branch. And yeah, it's I would love thing. to have a bow and arrow. Like, but I can't aim for shit. Like, I don't know if this is just me, but like, if I, if I play a game and it's like a game that's mainly like shooting, I ain't buying that game because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to be shit because I cannot aim to save my life. Yeah. But if it's to do with swords, I'm like, I'm in. Like, Elder Scrolls, I love. But Fallout, I'm like, eh, like I like the plot. I like the game. It's kind of cool. It's fun. But I'm shit shooting. I just cannot aim for to save my life. So it's the same with Burn Arrow. I would, I'd love to be able to have Burn Arrow, but I, I, I love swords. And, like, they're just easy. You just go, poof, done. But Burn Arrow cannot do. Can't aim to save my life. Have you ever done archery in real life, by the way? Any have yeah it's uh it, it's uh, you know what in real life it's so much easier than like in games and all that mm. kind of shit but i think it's because it's much heavier and i think you i think i guess you try harder i, I don't know but i have it is quite fun but it's um i, I still kind of shit basically <laughs> yeah i really liked archery i'd like to take that up again at some point um yeah it was it really is fun. fun but fencing have you done fencing That's... oh once um and it was you know when you um you'd be at school and you'd go away to like these adventure weekend holiday places. Yeah. Well, I think we did it there one time and it was awful. They they kind of gave us like a ten minute rundown of what you had to do, or not even that. It was probably like five minutes, and then you got like the the mask on and away you went. So suffice to say, I was terrible and awful. But um, yeah. oh, it was fun. It was it was good. It was. Have you seen the the lightsaber fence that people do? I I've probably seen some of those videos, yeah. It's great, yeah. and it makes me go, I want to, I want to do it again. <laughs> uh, let's have, let's just have a look at some of the characters. Then I mean, there's loads of good characters in this film. Um, I want to give a shout out to Pat Buttram as uh, Sheriff of Nottingham as well, who's so great in this film. He's really, really cool. Uh, he was introduced last, yeah, last week, wasn't he, as one of the uh, the dogs in Aristocats um, at the mill when Edgar's trying to take back all his possessions, the same voice. He's got such a distinctive voice, kind of like that Southern drawl to his voice a little bit, which for some reason just works for the sheriff of Nottingham. It shouldn't work because he ain't from Nottingham, but it, it, it just, yeah, I, I love the character. Um, and just what an absolute complete son of a bitch he is. And he loves doing his job. He sings a song. The first time that we see the sheriff of Nottingham, he is, he is strolling down the street. Not even stroll like he is... He's got the swagger. He's walking down the street and he's humming a song about how he loves doing his job and the, the, the taxes is due and he's going to he's gonna collect all the money. I love him. He's I great. do like that. That is, Yeah, I do like that. That's one of my favourite bits. And the bit where um, Robin Hood's disguised as the, as the blind beggar and uh, the sheriff of Nottingham gets a coin, throws it really hard into the cup so that all the other coins bounce out and then he just catches them all. He's an absolute dick, but he's, he's great. Uh, I, I love his character and yeah i always have done he's one of my favorites he still cracks me up and i think that's mostly to do with the voice it's a really distinctive voice to the character um little john's great uh let's see who else who else do i really like in the film uh alan um alan adale um played by roger miller that the, the folk singer at the start who's the narrator of the film i really like his character now alan adale is actually one of the merry men who they've um they've kind of just paired back to the narrator of this film but um it's a really interesting music choice, isn't it? Because it, it's kind of just like American, what would you say, like country style? Is that is that what kind of music you'd, you'd say it is? Or Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he was yeah, a country which... uh, singer, wasn't it? Like a honky-tonk um, sort of style, I guess, to his singing, but yeah. Which is weird when you think about it. Like you say, it should work. <laughs> It, it really does, yeah. I think because yeah. the setting is still in England, 
Um, granted, you've got animals in here that just are absolutely not native to England in any single way, but it still just kind of works for the film and even the music as well. Now, there aren't a whole bunch of songs in this film, really. They're, they're kind of very incidental and they're very fleeting and we move away from There's it. There's the but... whistle one. The whistle yeah, one, which whistle is my favourite. Um, Roger Miller wrote it and Roger Miller performed it. I'm guessing it originated in this film. You were convinced that you've heard this in somewhere yeah, else before this. But then again, you know, like 10 places. minutes ago, you were also convinced that uh, Adam Driver was in Ghostbusters. So, <laughs> well, Yeah, so... Yeah, I could be wrong, but I, I think it's, I don't know, it might just be one of those pieces that, you know, when you hear a music, hear a music, hear a piece of music and you you just think, oh, I've heard that many places, but you haven't. It's just, it has that kind of sound. So it might be that because I don't know where else I've heard it, but yeah, it has a sound where you listen to it and you go, this has been in more than just this. I remember it featuring in a, I mean, this was years after Robin Hood. Uh, I mean, I've I've always known it from this, but I have heard it a number of places. It was a song that you just hear people like whistling at school. I know it's been on TV adverts. I think it was used in a McDonald's advert for a spell. I know it was on the TV for something, um, but I think it's just one of those songs. Whistle stop. Um, if we if we talk about our favourite song from the film, though. Whistle Stop is one that, if you're whistling, I do find myself going into. But I think my favourite one in the whole film is is Oodalali. It, it's that one right after Whistle Stop, and you get into the film, Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest. Yeah. Like that, that melody, those lyrics have just like stayed in my head for absolutely years. And and every now and then, it just likes to recycle itself in my mind. Every now and then, I could be going about my business, and then I'm just like dun, 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 running through the forest. It's yeah. That's probably my favourite. There are some good ones. Not in Nottingham's quite a nice chill one. Phony King of England is is what it is. Actually, it's quite funny about that song, the Phony King of England. Apparently, it bears a strong resemblance to um, like an old English bawdy folk song called the Bastard King of England, which I, I never even knew about. Um, yeah, it says like the earliest known version of that song is from the nineteen twenties. So. But yeah, that's my favourite song. What would you say is your favourite song from this film? Whistle Stop. Like, it has to be. Just, yeah. I don't know if you class it as a song, but it has to be. It's just, to me, it's iconic. I don't know why, because I don't know where else I've heard it. I'm, I'm going to have to, do you know what, I might even Google it now just to see if there's anywhere else. that Because it's, for some reason, it's just one of those things, you heard a piece of music, but you're like, it sounds so familiar. It shouldn't be. Even if you've, have you ever listened to a song for the, like, obviously this wasn't the first time I heard it, but just an example if you ever listen to a song for the first time that you've gone oh i know this but you know that you don't because it's it's new like it's yeah. just released today like do you know what i mean it's got that kind of vibe and i think that's a really special thing you get from some like pieces of music so i would 100 percent say that uh, uh we just had a few comments come in um sea world man says D um is dale gonna be in the same room again like the first one that you did yeah that was going back to snow white and the seven dwarves wasn't it you mentioned that for the first one you no, thought it'd be no. quite nice to do that in person uh, i guess we could do another one of these in person we probably will at some point hell we've got like another there's, there's a particular go, right? one so... there's a particular one that we should and i don't know how many away is um tell, tell me tell me which one is it well I, I won't because then i want to surprise people oh but if yeah. you don't know whereabouts it is, then how long? I know, but I can tell you at another day, and you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, then just I'll say see. this. Are we going to be waiting a while or not too much? I'll level with you. I can't remember the number of it, so okay. I don't okay. actually. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. You, you, won't, you won't even know yourself. Okay. No, that's exactly. fine. Exactly. So I will tell you. I will, I will let you know. Well, SeaWorld, man, watch this space. You know, we'll probably be in the same room again at some point. That means yeah, you have to was... watch every week, so yeah yeah that's because i mean we don't live all too far away from each other but yeah just getting to and from with work and whatnot we we, we couldn't do that week after week and that, and know. i pretty much had a, my car stolen for the weekend so not like like <laughs> that's well, new information you didn't tell me that <laughs> to, to cut a story short it was like i was parked somewhere and two people literally parked around my car and i couldn't move like for the like literally since Friday and they didn't move and uh, you know that's technically not illegal so the police can't do anything so for the whole weekend I've been without a car. But your but your car hasn't been stolen it's just parked up. No, but what I'm saying is on a technicality it's like being in a place and it's been captured <laughs> is what I'm saying. Huh. So, but now I have a car again as of this morning. 
Oh, which okay. Was well, that's good. No, I thought you got it like nicked or something. I was like, Jesus Christ. No, from basically from Friday night until this morning, I had my car was trapped and locked <laughs> by two cars, which was great. And I had to walk to work this morning to then find it in the center of Birmingham. Oh, cool. It's there. You got it. Which is yeah. great. Uh, Carl says as well, where I live, we have a castle called Rockingham Castle. And I did the tour and rumored from an entry in the prisoner archives that Robin Hood was captive there. That's really cool. Um, yeah, because we were talking about that. We were like, Robin Hood, is he a fictional character? You know, folklorish character? Is he completely fictitious? Is he based on a real person? I always think with stories like that, there's, I mean, there's probably documentaries on this I could I watch mean, that would give me a much clearer answer. I don't think there's smoke a... without fire, so I think he probably was a real person or at least an amalgamation of different people that have been kind of wrapped up into the what in, into one and this like really heroic um yeah hero figure i mean he's a bit like jesus isn't he <laughs> like i suppose so is he really is he not who knows was jesus a fox as well maybe exactly who knows like, so he's a bit like jesus really when you think about it hey if noah can get two of every single animal on the entire planet into one boat then J jesus could be a fox and yet didn't save the fucking dinosaurs what a prick. yeah well m mammals well no i mean if, oh we're gonna get we're gonna piss a lot of people off with this one creationists and whatnot <laughs> like saying. as i say mammals also, came way way later than the dinosaurs but um yeah apparently and also not. one of my questions would be did the birds get on the ark because if so then they're selfish bastards because they can fucking fly and all oh. they're doing is taking up space so don't some people say that dinosaurs are, are like all a conspiracy and they've been planted under the ground well, yeah, to be so is jesus discovered so. yeah well yeah he was yeah <laughs> and then but then <laughs> jesus came back video. like he fucked off well, and then he, he came back it's like so you know technically the dinosaurs might you know who else fucked off and came back <laughs> I don't know, Dale. <laughs> Who else fucked off and came back? Van Halen did that at one yes. point, and uh, <laughs> they came back in 2012. And you know, it was nice, but they never came to England, so I'm still bitter about that. And, Dude, uh... I was waiting. I was waiting for the reference, and I thought we could we probably could up towards the end of the review soon. I was like, he hasn't said it yet. Has he forgotten? <laughs> I always oh, thought that, that's so, that was like a smooth segue right there into one of the Van Halen references. I thought you come pre-planned. With a reference in mind to drop, but that, uh that's the beauty of it. Not always, and then sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. So I'm there, even like surprising myself. Yeah, like I'm there, like oh, I want to find it. I want to find it. And that time I was like, I found it. Let's go. But I'll always find it. Never doubt me. I'll always find it. Uh, so let's go into like the legacy of this film real quick. So there's a few bits of trivia here, and you know how we say all oh, certain disney films that might come out way way later down the line were they inspired by this one and things like that i i always thought this in the back of my mind and i was reading here and apparently it's true um you've seen zootopia right yeah so the main character fox always reminded me of robin hood every single time uh, and apparently disney animator and director uh brian howard admitted that robin hood was his favorite film while growing up and said it was a major influence on zootopia <laughs> So there we go. There's that one. Um, also, according to Wikipedia, uh, it's one of the many inspirations for the then emerging furry fandom. You know, I, I guess we, we can't have it all, can we? But don't, I don't want to kink shame unless it's a kink that deserves shaming. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, and this is pretty cool as well. I didn't even really like this film. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, Wes Anderson at all and I watched a bit of this film and I just really didn't like it. I loved the book growing up but didn't like the film. 2009's Fantastic Mr. Fox, the stop motion animation film, apparently features um, the song Love in the film. You know, like the, the romantic, lovey-dovey Maid Marian Robin Hood song um, that features in that film which I think is, uh, is quite a nice, interesting little reference. I've not there. seen that film. I like that. Um... And then, yeah, apparently book, a CG adaptation live action was in the works and it, it was being developed. But I think, thankfully, now um, it looks like it was going to be released exclusively on Disney Plus, but it's no longer going ahead or it's in production hell. I don't know. 
Hopefully they stay way, way away from that because that will look terrifying and probably be Aren't shit. they doing a Snow White one as well? Oh, God, hopefully. I think that's been pushed back to next year, hasn't it? Because they're basically redoing the whole film by the looks of it. Good. Uh, well, you know what? Okay, if, if they do that Robin Hood, we can't have a strong, heroic, masculine Robin Hood character. Um, Maid Don't Marian. The, the roles would be flipped. Maid Marian would have the bow and she would save Robin Hood. And she would be amazing and perfect at everything. And Robin Hood would be completely incompetent and terrible. That's exactly what they do. Um, anything else to talk about with this film? We've talked about all of the characters. We've talked about the music, um, the legacy of the film. I, I just, I just had a really great time watching it. Just all, all the set pieces and everything. The animation doesn't even bother me. Like at this point, I think I've become accustomed to it now. You know, I think when we did Sleeping Beauty straight into Hundred and One Dalmatians, I was like, whoa, okay, we've. The animation quality's kind of dropped off a cliff a little bit. Although I, I do think that style works for 101 Dalmatians, and I admitted to that. Um, I'm kind of just used to the style now as we're going through these films. So, you know, the animation in this film isn't spectacular in terms of where my, my jaw literally hits the ground at what the possibilities of animation are. That will come later in the Disney Renaissance, probably in some of the earlier Disney films we've already talked about. Um, Snow White, Pinocchio, Fantasia, etc. Bambi as well. But it's just a it's just a really fun kind of romp, isn't it? It's, it's got your swashbuckling action in there. It's got your sword fights. It's got, um, you know, love conquering all and best in the villain and all of that stuff. Oh, I never talked about the alternate ending to this film. Um, there was going to be a bit more of a, an elongated ending to this film. So, you know, when at the very end of the film, when the castle's on fire and Robin Hood's on the tower and he jumps off into the water and the archers are loosing their arrows into the water and there's like a fake out death scene, you know, Robin Hood ain't going to be dead. Um, and then he's like breathing underwater and it was just his hat that got hit. That's kind of where the film finishes. After that, you have the, the marriage scene, you have um, King Richard returning and that's it. Uh, the alternate ending, Robin Hood was actually going to get wounded by an arrow. Um, like, an arrow was going to hit him after he makes that jump into the water. Um, Little John was going to rescue Robin from the um, from the moat or the lake um, and escape to the church. And um, I think the mice, uh, the, um, the, the one who plays the organ, the two mice there anyway, they were going to try and, like, help heal him and, and save him. Uh, Prince John and Sir Hiss uh, tail them to the church and they corner them and I think he's about to kill Robin Hood when his brother walks in. I don't know how he realised that everything was kicking off at the church but uh, Richard the Lionheart shows up there and then it just kind of goes into the rest of the film that we've seen with, with the marriage and the ending and everything like that. So it's going to have a bit more of an ending. I don't know if we needed all of that you know, would I have been interested in seeing it? Maybe, and the, the the deleted scenes had just like a bunch of sketches, like concept art of what it was going to look like. But I think the ending still works for what it is. You know, there's a little fake out death scene like we got in Jungle Book. I think they even play the same music again. I always talk about that. They keep using the same sad orchestra cues every single yeah, time. Yeah, it's that nice little... It's kind of become quite a cliche, isn't the ending, in a way. It's that nice little... Do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of that... Not horrific, because that's completely the wrong word to use, but you know what I mean? It's kind of sad, but then it's kind yeah. of nice, and it's that nice Disney, uh, which is quite cool to be fair. And it, that's, all, that's all we need. Like, I mean, we give me the simple things. That's all we want in life. Simple, well, sometimes it nice. can work really well. I mean, look at Beauty and the Beast, the ending of that film. Um, I have watched that film countless times, and you know he ain't going to die. You know it's going to be a happy ending. You know they're going to live happily ever after. But when when he stabbed and Belle's got Beast in, in her arms and he says, at least I got to see you one last time. And Alan Menken's doing what he does best with the music. It gets me every time, man. And I'm like, oh, God, Beauty this is Beast horrible. Is, it gets me every time. Beauty and the Beast is one of the, one of the ones where the sequel is amazing. Oh, Enchanted Christmas. Yeah. It's got Tim Curry as, as Forte. Great. Yeah. Amazing. But What's funny musical, about that film is that it actually, it's not a sequel. It takes place during short. the first movie. So you have to kind of view it as this massive deleted scene. But it's great. It's amazing. So it's and like, it's just yeah. great. 
No, no, it is. It, I, I I watch that all the time as a kid. I I, I love Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. It's actually it's got some really like... good music in there. Not not comparable to Alan Menken's, but some of them damn near are. There's um, a song in there. It's like Aladdin Two. Aladdin Two again, great sequel. Return of Jafar. I remember absolutely rinsing that film. I loved that as a kid, and then yeah. I, I went back and rewatched it. Um, not all too long ago, I don't think. A couple of a few years ago now, and I was like, holy fuck, this animation's really bad. Because it then was the again, TV show, wasn't it? It was the TV show animation, so it was a lot more. The more down. I think about it, um, a lot of those uh, Disney Renaissance has uh, good sequels, like Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid Two, like Lion, good Lion King Two. Yeah, I was going to say Lion King Two. Yeah, I mean, so to be all fair, of these sequels of them... pale in comparison to the original. All of them. Oh yeah, but it's in comparison to other sequels. Yeah. Yeah, like they, I think the nineties again had it, like they could do sequels and that was fine, but they can't. Anymore. Yeah, I think in terms of sequels, Beauty and the Beast, uh, the third Aladdin film goes in some pretty interesting directions. I remember um, the King of Thieves, yeah, with his dad, and it's kind of like Little Mermaid three. It's like okay, we we like the sequel, but just don't push it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean, it's, yeah, it's that kind of vibe. It's like okay, that you know what I mean. Please don't let's do a retrospective on the Disney sequels. I I don't <laughs> want to subject that. myself to that so kind of fun. pain. That would be so much fun. Do you know what kind of pain I was um, objected to today? I asked someone if they'd watch Bugs Life, and they went, I don't know what that is. Dude, we're so old. We are so... <laughs> Speaking of old, and I, I will actually probably do a review on this at some point, um... <laughs> May the 4th, and I think for that entire week, I don't think it's just the weekend, I think it's for the entire week, Phantom Menace is back in cinemas, I've already booked my tickets, I'm out of my mind excited to see it on the big screen again, 25th anniversary, let that sink in for a second, 25th anniversary, that's gone like that, I remember, I remember seeing that film, I remember it so distinctly, that's 25 years, in another 25 years, I'm going to be 56 That is a really de- fucking depressing thought. <laughs> it's, it's it's twenty years since Shrek two. Don't one. don't don't we don't no, 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 no. I'm gonna stop this now because it's making me really just yeah it's horrible. But it's horrible the more the, the, the more fun fact fact more fun fact is that when you were a child there were people your age who were born in the sixties. <laughs> That's more fun. Holy fuck! That's funner. To quote um, Apollo Creed, it's too bad we've got to get old. <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. Uh, we've got a comment from Brian Emery that says, I love this movie. It's one of my favourite Disney movies. There you go. I told you, it's one of the best. It's, do you know what? It, it It's one of the ones where, you know, I think you had an opinion of this being in Kingdom Hearts, didn't you? Yeah, I... <sighs> I don't know if this could work as a world. Maybe. I, I guess it would be very similar to... You've played this. I mean, I, I, I'm i just going by what I've seen. I guess it would be similar to Tangled, in a way, like the world. You'd probably it, have you know what? the... Um, like, what places would you have? You'd probably have just, like, the forest, like Sherwood Forest. You'd probably have the place where the archery contest takes place, and then maybe Prince John's Castle. you know what I think would be interesting? I don't know how they'd do it, but... You know how they go to other worlds and they blend in? So, like, you know, in Lion King, Sora turns into a lion. All that sort of stuff. They'll blend in. They'll, so, they, you know, like I say, they blend in with that world. You know, Robin Hood, he's a fox, right? Dressed yeah. as a human. What if they did something where they found him in, like, Twilight Town or something because he tried to blend in as a human? Like, I don't know. Just they could go in some sort of... I, I don't know if I'm thinking too much into it, which would be like... But there could be something there, couldn't there? Don't get me wrong, like... I, I would love it. And actually, it'd be it'd be interesting if they did this, where you have Robin Hood and Little John, and then Sora, Donald, and Goofy rock up, and he's just like, oh, you're the Merry Men, or something like that. So you got Robin yeah, Hood, that's... Little John, and then the rest of them make up the band of Merry Men. That could be interesting. That could be pretty yeah. fun. Uh, I imagine like the platforming kind of stuff that was more introduced in Kingdom Hearts 2 and certainly 3, that could work really well with Robin Hood. It could be archery contest to break up the game a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, some proper like you know, nice mini games where like it's moving like that, and you've got to aim, aim in the middle and the like darts. Like you know, when you play dart mini games yeah. and games, and they're really addictive. <laughs> like those. 
Uh, Robin, like Robin Hood as a summon might be pretty boss, but I don't know if the game would think it's a bit too violent if he's like straight up firing arrows at someone. But I imagine like you you summon Robin Hood and he's he's either there just chilling. He'd be a really cool um companion in like the actual world. Actually, you know how you get like Aladdin, you get Jack Skeleton that help you out, and you've and Tarzan and things like that. I could imagine Robin Hood being a really cool character in that setting. But if if he was a summon, I could just imagine him. You know, like firing the arrow into the air and then firing the other arrow, which knocks that arrow in midair so it hits the target, like at the um, the, the contest. Yeah, you could do that. And there's a load of blood when it comes out. That's, the that's what I'm thinking. It might be a bit too violent for King of Hearts, perhaps. So, yeah, maybe amazing. not. It's not exactly kid friendly. I'm turning Robin Hood into like fucking Legolas or something. I'm thinking more Ares, like <laughs> with all the arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Carl says the Matrix is celebrating its twenty fifth anniversary this year as so, well. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine. Woo! See, the Matrix I watched. No, you know what? I I think I watched the Matrix right around the time that Reloaded was coming out. I think it was all pretty much within close succession to everything. Um, I remember watching the matrix for the first time i was at my uncle's place I'd, i've probably mentioned this on my channels before but he's got like a shit ton of vhs cassette tapes like he's got thousands uh he's still got them actually and now he's collecting dvds as well so he's got thousands more of those too um but i wanted to watch the matrix i thought it looked cool everyone was wearing those like tribal leather jackets or whatever they're called like the goth trench coat looking things the shades it looked really fucking cool and I wanted to watch it, and I think it was right when Reloaded was about to come out, which was, I want to say 2002, I think. So it would have been around that kind of time. I watched The Matrix 1. Did I understand all of it? Probably not. Did I think it w was and is one of the best action films I've ever seen? Hell yeah. And the day after, it's not very often I do this with a movie, certainly not back then, I asked if I could watch it again. And um, yeah, I watched it twice, and I was blown away by it. And then I watched Reloaded when it came out on video because I was I was too young to watch it at the time I think, and I was like this is this is kind of boring and kind of shit, but it's got some fun action set pieces in there which I enjoyed at the time. And then I don't Matrix know what you're Revolutions thinking on this. came out and I just thought this is shit. <laughs> like I, I just I just fucking hated Matrix Revolutions. Even I don't know then. what you're thinking on this, but I did that with uh, Logan. So I watched it and then I watched it, it the noir version like an hour afterwards. Oh, Lo Logan, did you say? Yeah. Oh, I haven't. W I haven't watched the um, the black and white version of that yet. Yeah, because I watched it, and then because I got the DVD or the Blu-ray, or whatever, and it came with the noir, the black and white version. As soon as I watched it, and I went, oh, "That was really good." And I saw there was that, and I was like, "Do you know what?" I already imagined like scenes like in the low, and I was like, "That'd be amazing." Let's watch it again, and I watched it like straight away. <laughs> What's um? This is actually a good question for anyone watching at home as well. What's your take on on black and white versions of films? I'm not talking about like old school cinema like Casablanca and shit like that. I'm talking about taking a film, a modern film now, and then in like a year or a couple of months after it's released, they're like, right, we're gonna do a black and white version. Um, depends, what, what do you it think depends on it depends on the movie because um, I think it, it depends. Like, let's say you take a movie and you make it black and white. Some would look black and white and just look the same. If that makes sense, you go that it doesn't have any impact. And there are some. Like I say, Logan, the reason I watched it is because I went, I can imagine some scenes would just look so amazing in black and white. It's like, um, it was like Ghost of Tsushima. You can play that in black and white. And I think a lot of that, I haven't played that in black and white, but I think a lot of that, you know, black and white was so well. So it does depend on it and whether it's one of those where it needs it or whether it will enhance the movie. Um but I do think there are more that should get that kind of treatment. Whereas, like, because I say we've got the option, I think there are more that should get that, but not like every movie. Yeah, for me, it's it's weird because it always feels a bit cash grabby now. Like a film comes out that's mildly successful or very successful, and it's just like, oh, black and white version coming out. And and most with modern movies now, a lot of it the, the color is so striking. Like, that's a big part. Yeah, of it. imagine. Like... Go on. Oh no, you froze. That's why I got confused. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, imagine uh, like Phantom Menace in black and white. It'd just be pointless. Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm talking about. And, and yeah. another black and white version they did was Mad Max Fury Road, which I'm not even like a massive, huge fan of that film. Uh, I love some of the older Max Mad Max films, but 
that film is so striking the colors like the look of the desert there's a bit where the trucks are chasing after mad max and you've got all um like fireworks that are left off like like powder like powder paint exploding in the sky you got yellows and reds and everything and it's so visual and it's so striking and i haven't watched the black and white version of that but i just think that that's just going to annihilate everything within that film that makes it so visual do you and reckon, I guess it would be the same um, with Logan as well. Logan would probably work better, I guess, but an example, a modern example that actually came out literally earlier this year, um, well, back end of last year into this year, is Godzilla Minus One, which I went to see on Christmas Eve. I didn't do a review on it, and I really wished, I probably will do a review on that movie at some point when I watch it again, because it was my favourite film from last year. It was absolutely outstanding. Uh, and looked incredible and then a few months after this might be a bit cash grabby but they said oh we're going to do a black and white version but why i think that works better similar to ghost of tsushima is that it's harkening back to an like an older time of hollywood like the original godzilla movie when it came out in like 54 or whenever it was was in black and white and they're doing that to emulate the look of the original and you've got like the original soundtrack used in there um it might hide some of the maybe not so great visual effects it did win the oscar uh, it did win the academy award for best visual effects though which i was really glad it went to because they had like less than 15 mil budget on that film and, and what they were able to achieve with that kind of budget is outstanding um so well, making it in black and white can about... hide some of that a bit too yeah because you say about obviously it's it's going back to like a type of movie what about like kill volume two that would work i think yeah, I don't well, know. yeah, because like the style of that again is like yeah. old school. I don't know food. how yeah. the yeah. whole thing would carry, but that's because again it was shot to be in color, so I don't know how the whole thing would carry. But there are certainly some scenes that would be amazing. Well, there are some. The, the quite a lot of segments in Kill Bill that are in black and white. I mean, there's there's the fight yeah. scene which we talked about, but that was only made yeah. in black and white for um, Western audiences because I guess they just thought it was too violent. But then there's other bits in the film that they thought weren't violent. I don't know, but you've got the um, the intro to the film where Bill shoots her in the head. That's done in black and white. The yep. um, when we get to Kill Bill two, and I think it's like chapter six when you get the when you see what happens at the wedding and you get introduced to Bill properly for the first time. That whole chapter's in black and white as well. So it was used quite a lot. What um, about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Oh, sorry. What about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Nah, you need the color in that film. You See, really need that. I'm it, divided. It wasn't because... that old school. It was like sixties, sixties film. This is so the technical, thing. technical it was in. I'm divided. I think there's certain things like at the ranch where I think it could look all right, but like you say, there's a lot of it where the color does shine. So I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to watch one just to see. Sometimes with black and white, when they say like, "Oh, we're doing a black and white version," I'm just like, "Why? Like, what? What? What do you get out of a black and white version?" of a film i they should do one of uh wizard of oz no well i mean it, it's already in like sepia isn't it like that's the whole thing and then it, it goes um, into they... beautiful technicolor when you get into um into the world of oz well wicked's coming out soon oh yeah don't remind me that piece of shit i'm so <laughs> i am so happy about that it excites me a lot it looks fucking awful from that trailer no it doesn't no it doesn't and it's, it's gonna make a human... shit ton of money because Exactly. Everyone loves Wicked. It's got the best human in the world in the movie, so it's going to be amazing. We'll so see. I'm going we'll to watch see. it a lot. But the fact of the matter is, I need to get myself to the cinema more. And I feel like, well, I'm letting myself down. I'm letting you guys down. Um, you know, obviously, we're, we're doing this every Monday. It's great doing these Disney films. But if you guys aren't interested in Disney so much, then you, you're kind of you're shit out of luck. Because these are the only videos that I'm putting out. But... As I say, I'm going to go to the cinema on Friday to catch Dune Part 2. I'm going to try and see if there's like an early screening of it or something. So I might do a review on Dune Part 2 if anyone's interested in seeing that. I know that Dune's been out for a while now. It's been out for a good few weeks. Um, yeah, I'm trying. We've got, um, speaking of Godzilla, we've got Godzilla Kong New M. Is it called New Empire? Why is everything Empire? You've got Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. You've got... King Kong and Godzilla, New Empire, like everything's the Empire's gonna fucking strike back as well, probably at some point. Like it's just everywhere. And of course well, Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace is coming out. That's that's the weekend of May the fourth. Uh I'm seeing it on fifth, so Revenge of the Fifth. 
still counts. So I'm going to go and see it then. So I'll get a review out for that. And um, yeah, just talk about. You should see the um, the new Adam Driver movie. <laughs> was you're going to say like Adam Driver was in Phantom Menace now, aren't you? <laughs> Do you know what the funny thing is? Imagine someone just tuned in, then they'd be like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> they'd be like, "I don't know what you're talking this about." This fucking guy. How did, no, he doesn't yeah. know his Star Wars. Doesn't know shit. That's not a thing. <laughs> Um, but anyway, um, I think we'll we'll probably round off there, really. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's tuned in tonight. I think at one point we had like seven viewers on this thing, which is, it might not sound like a lot, it's single digit still, but for these, uh, that's that's a pretty good turnout. But a new subscriber as well, I just saw from about a half hour ago, um, Captain Spaulding 64 has subscribed. Thank you very much for the subscribe. And of course, a massive thank you to everyone that's been um, chatting and keeping the conversation going tonight. Do you know um, who my favourite captain is, though? Um, Pugwash. Yeah, exactly. Mine was Caveman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or, a good one. Or Captain Planet. Does anyone remember Captain Planet? Do you know what I find weird about Captain Caveman? I have this theory mine not even existed. Why? You should really exist. I used to watch it before <laughs> no, going to school. I love that show. I know, me too. But no one on Earth other than you remembers who he is. Like, every I... single human doesn't have a clue so i'm there thinking what if i'm imagining this every time like what if it just it's it's in my head i googled it and i'm like yeah, what if google's wrong like, if i know? remember rightly there was captain caveman and i think it was either followed by or preceded by um what was that that taz tasmanian devil show come to tasmania oh, come to but, tasmania yeah it, yeah like tasmania on his island and yeah 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 that used to be on too i think both of those and catch the pigeon as yeah. well or stop the pigeon, yeah. I guess. So we always thought it was catch the, the pigeon. It's stop yes, the pigeon. That was the weird thing. I remember we said this. Yeah, it's stop the pigeon, and I'm like, I'm just so confused. So that's not a thing. We've talked about this um at like an at an earlier time, but that would be a really cool series to do as well. It'd be a lot of prep to do it, and it'd be a lot of viewing time. But going back to some of like these old kids shows that we we grew up with and and doing reviews on them. You mentioned about just picking like a handful of episodes from a series and just talking about them. But I think if we're going to talk about an older series, we need to do we need to watch the whole series to give it a complete overview. So I don't know, maybe sometime for the future. But for right now, we're doing these Disney films and announcing what we're doing next week. So today we did Robin Hood, of course. If you've just joined us, you're a bit late to the party. But next week we're up to number twenty-two, which is one of the most wholesome fucking movies ever made, one of the most wholesome characters ever created. It's the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Look at that. Uh, Look how fucking happy he is. Anyone who doesn't like Winnie the Pooh, you have no fucking soul. Okay? Look at him. He is... Winnie the Pooh is just is just living his best life. And that's what we should all aspire to, right? Eating so. honey. That's a good question. Has anyone joined, like, recently? Very recent. I don't know. Apparently we've got two viewers at the moment. I don't know if we count as one of those viewers. Everyone's gone to fucking bed. Everyone's got shit to do they don't they don't want to hear us talk about robin hood for like an hour and 15 minutes well to be but fair we've been we talking need... about other stuff for about 15 20 minutes so there you go this was a fun one yeah no as i said like robin hood it's i i think it still holds up fantastically well i had a great time watching it mm. again i've watched it yeah. fairly recently mm. so yeah. i knew it was going to be good and it's still great. It's nice to know that it still holds up. Um, even though we're watching these in sequence, I wonder if my opinion on it might change. But, nah, it ain't changing anytime soon. It's been a while since I've watched The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, though. I've only watched this a handful of times. Um, obviously, we all know the characters and everything. So, um, that's going to be a nice one to go back to. 71 minutes. One minute longer than Robin Hood. So, just giving you some warning for next week. Uh, yeah, so we'll be back on Monday next week talking about some Winnie the Pooh. So thank you to everyone who's who's watched, commented, appreciate you all. Um, guys, I'm going to try and get more videos out. I know I keep saying that. I'm going to try. I'm really going to try. Look out for one this Friday. I'll, I'll probably want to talk more this Friday. 